What's up guys, Skillionaire just poured cold water into his tea, so you know how tired my brain is this morning. Nevertheless, we're going to go into this, we're going to make big predictions, bold predictions for the new sieves coming out in 2025, because why not? I love this stuff, I love this hype, let's go for it. I'm going to give you four this vids, four pairings, because I believe they're going to come out in twos, and my top four. But before I do that, I'm going to start with some assumptions so you know, so it makes sense, right? Otherwise, you, you might, it just might be a bit, a bit confusing. So I kind of said one of them already. I'm going to assume that they're going to come out, going to come out with two main sieves because that's what they did in the previous DLC. Okay, they came out with Byz Byzantines and the Japanese. And even in the free content update way before that, they brought out the Ottomans and the Malians. So I think it's super safe, as safe as you can predict in the corporate world, that the next DLC will come out with two sieves as well. Or at least, I mean, I, I won't, we could all hope for more, right? But uh, let's just say it's going to be two. When that will be is likely spring 2025 because they said in an article that uh, something big's coming then. If I feel like if it was coming in 2024, they would have said 2024 in the article. That doesn't mean there might not be, you know, like smaller content updates and stuff. But just in terms of big DLC, that's when I predict that's going to be. On top of those two sieves, I think it's going to have four variants of just like the previous one. And I'm pretty sure they actually said in the previous one that all of the original sieves will get variants. So that means we can pretty much guarantee, I'll use purple here, pretty much as again, like I said, as much as you can guarantee in the corporate world. But you can basically guarantee that the English, the Rus, the Delhi and the Mongolians will be getting variant sieves. Much like the previous original four did with uh, Shangxi, Ayubids, Order of the Dragon and Jean d'Arc. Probably butchered that. I'm not going to predict what these variants are going to be because there's literally no point. I mean, look how goofy these ones were. I could never have predicted these four. You give me a hundred years and I couldn't have predicted Jean d'Arc would have been a sieve. <laughs> so I'm not even going to try with these four. Uh, I just bet there's going to be something uh, niche uh, about some specific person during the time period because uh, that seems to be how they do them. You know, it could be, it'll still be cool. Like, I love variety. Uh, the more, the more, the merrier, and uh, I look forward to them adding it. I suppose if I, if I, if I was forced to make any kind of prediction at all, I would probably guess that uh, at least one of the sieves will be based around a person who, who, who was a woman, basically, because yeah, 2024 and all that. And it just makes sense because that's how they've done the previous ones. So yeah. Other than that, though, I don't have anything to say about the variant sieves. So uh, let's talk about the main sieves. And I think there's nothing else to say other than, oh yeah, sorry, one more assumption. And uh, this might seem obvious, but bear with me. It's a DLC, right? So they want to make money. So they have to put in a sieve that's going to make money, right? Bear in mind, there's a difference between what we want as the nerds who love this game and what it's going to sell to the masses. You know, the people on Xbox who just, I'm uh, sorry, not to say that the Xbox people aren't passionate, but as in, you're more likely to find casual players there. You know, just, just the people who see a DLC pop up on their home screen one time and haven't seen Reddit chit chat about it. And then they'll be like, oh, that looks cool. The Japanese, I'm buying this. You know what I mean? It has to be a sieve with a hook like that. And I honestly believe that's why the Japanese was in the previous one. I know the Byzantines is popular with us nerds, but I actually personally, you can disagree with me if you want, but I personally don't believe the Byzantines alone are enough to carry sales. So they are paired with an absolute banger, which is Japan in popular culture. I mean, do you, I mean, come on, samurai? Like, you know, do you need me to say anything else? Like, they're the coolest shit ever, right? So I believe that they, uh, that's, a, that's a fundamental thing they're gonna, they're gonna try and keep doing going forwards. One banger paired with another one, which is probably, in, in my opinion, going to be, uh, for example, if it's something in, in Europe, like, like the Byzantines, for example, or anything, right? Let's say they pick the Spanish. I don't believe the second one will also be a European faction. Like, uh, look how far away the original two were, the Ottomans and Malians, and then how far away the Japanese and Byzantines were. And I just think they do want that, again, just the same reason I said with the variant sieves, they do want that sort of, uh, that variety, uh, that, that sort of, uh, I try not to use the loaded term nowadays. Um, um, yeah, I think variety, I'll stick with variety, I won't say uh, the, the other word, that, <laughs> so it's, yeah, uh, people are angry nowadays. They want variety in the peoples and the cultures being um, shown to us, and I think that's that's great in a game like Age of Empires 4 because we want that as well. We don't want like uh, you know 500 sieves from the same continent, even if that continent is amazing and really cool. We want them to be spread out. So that's the other assumption there. So in my opinion is going to be a banger uh, that's definitely going to sell, and that could be from anywhere. And then it'll be paired with somewhere else which is less commonly seen on screen. And again. That's a good thing, in my opinion, because uh, we all like we all us nerds, especially we love to see these um, uh, lesser seen, you, you know, like the Vietnamese, for example, uh, on our screens. Okay, with that in mind, enough riffraff. I'm going to use uh, the the color system 
let's go from green to red so so uh, in terms of likelihood in my opinion i believe the least likely on my list okay i believe that it is a bit odd that we don't have a sort of native sort of hindu indian subcontinent faction i mean i know the delhi sultanate obviously nowadays are, are, are sort of native to the region but like originally around this time period they were invaders to the region right so i think it would be interesting to uh, and I, I think they would want to show that i also think uh, india is an area with a lot of what we call uh, in, in the business world purchasing power you know, you know people who have money basically so if they see their their country sort of represented they'll be like yeah i want to play this game you know so again the popular thing the thing that sells and then i think they will pair it with another sort of perhaps uh, powerful faction at the time but which is uh, the venetians or like the venice by the way not a professional historian so if i'm wrong about that please feel free to, 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 to smash me in the comments like tell me that <laughs> yeah, i don't know anything but i'm pretty sure i'm pretty sure venice was a pretty powerful uh, power during the, the rough time period that this game is set somewhere in that timeline I'm pretty sure Venice was quite um, uh, a powerful thing before P Portuguese rose to prominence uh, in the Imperial Age I might be wrong there you know you can tell me if I am so I think this is a possible pairing we could see but I think it's the least likely pairing uh, but you know it's just to give you a warm-up of the kind of thing I'm going for here right the next thing I think we could possibly see possibly see let me try and uh, remind myself what this could be. Yeah, so this could be a... Uh, brain blip. <laughs> so tired, I can't... I, I was going to be the Koreans, but I can't remember who I was going to pair them with. Uh, so yeah, I think Koreans are, are, are very popular. Oh, that's right, that's what I was going to do. It'll be the Koreans and some kind of uh, Eastern European, like for example, either Poland or Lithuania or, or the, or the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth historians. Am I right in the timeline of that? Is that is that or does that come afterwards? I might be I might, that might be too early for that. But just something um, something Eastern Europe to the east of Holy Roman Empire, basically, uh, I think could work quite well here. Obviously, uh, the European player base um, plays RTS games, I think, more than any other other continent. I think. I think I might be wrong there. So obviously um, that would do well in terms of like uh, selling power, but but also Koreans as well. So they're both like sort of mid to high like popularity. So together they could pair to make a high selling DLC, if that makes sense. Uh, there is an alternative to Koreans that it could be something like the Vietnamese or, or, or the Cambodian Khmer Empire, but I feel like it would be it would most likely be uh, Koreans first. Again, just for that popularity reasons, especially if they're going to pair it with um, uh, an East European country, which is slightly smaller population basically uh, in terms of modern day and stuff like that. anyway so that's that i'm gonna get on to my good ones now <laughs> my, well, i mean that's the, I, I personally believe those ones are possible but i'm gonna make some bolder predictions okay i believe it's possible i don't think it's actually going to be the one but i think it's possible that we'll see spain as the popular one the one that sells the banger you know the one that makes people go whoa Spain are in this, you know, the Spanish, you know, no one expects the Spanish Inquisition, you know, all this kind of business, right? Uh, again, I'm not, I'm getting mixing up the time periods there, but yeah. Um, and paired with something, I'm going to do a big circle here because it's not on my map, because uh, I don't want to have it too zoomed out. Something in the Americas, most likely the Aztecs. It could be a way, it could be a cool way to introduce that. Hell, they could even tie in the campaign, although I'll mention the campaign at the end very briefly, what I think they might be doing with that, but yeah, so with, with, uh, with Spain, and yeah i think they could i think it'll be a decent it'd be, it'd be a wasted opportunity to not pair it with something uh in the americas right again what we want and what what actually sells and stuff sometimes is different but i do think this actually sells too so it's not a bad idea if they want to bring in those the, that last massive uh, land mass that we haven't seen represented in game yet uh i think they could easily do that by pairing it with a uh, major faction yeah because as much as we us nerds we want to see the aztecs in game the mines in game the incas in game realistically they alone in my opinion sorry if this offends anyone but in my opinion don't have enough weight uh unless they're paired with like a massive campaign and stuff like that of course that could be exciting but i, I just don't think that's gonna happen uh, i might be wrong I might be wrong okay my main and primary prediction is coming are you ready yes <laughs> are you ready you might skip forward to this part i don't know okay What's the coolest thing uh, that's almost in, in, in every single pop culture nowadays? Vikings. So I believe that they are aware of that. Uh, I think there's been talk originally because of the campaign and stuff that, about the Danes. 
already been sort of partially a little bit in game so it's, it is it's not crazy oh by the way speaking of the danes being partially in game the lithuanians are also partially in game so that's another origin one maybe the yellow one but we'll see we haven't seen any precedent for that yet they haven't really yeah so we'll see um with the danish i think that's the one they could pick they could pick the swedish because they're also significant i personally don't believe they're going to pick a can, like a sort of amalgam scandinavia faction like exists in that uh mod pack uh that some of these guys are working on which by the way i love a modding scene uh, great job you guys if you're watching this um but i don't think we'll see a scandinavia faction so I, I might be wrong but i do believe the cultures are distinct enough like it look how granular they are with their other choices you know they, they, they don't pick like the indian subcontinent do they they pick specifically like the delhi sultan and stuff like that like I, I, maybe that's a bad example but i just feel like uh it's not like them to zoom in to, to zoom out so much and pick a region as opposed to a uh, uh an arguably distinct civilization even if they had a lot in common you know uh, yeah they didn't put the english and the scottish in one did they although again i suppose they've got differences Oh, I just believe that it's going to be either the Danish or the Scottish, and I'm going to pick the Danish because I just think it's a little bit more likely. As the as the seller, as the banger on the front cover, there's going to be sort of Vikings. You know what I mean? Like Viking boats, long boats, kind of thing. Maybe they'll even have the horn helmets, even though I, I know the horn helmets aren't a real thing. So I hope they don't. Maybe they can have one blowing on the horn with the helmet on. You know, to be a little bit more historical there. You know that kind of thing. Uh, and I believe this is going to be paired with, this is actually one I haven't heard other people say, uh, is Ethiopia. Uh, I don't know the historical boundaries, so I'm just going to do a big circle here. Um, it's somewhere, somewhere here. And uh, Ethiopia, because right now Malians are a little bit lonely over here in West Africa. It does make sense to have another African faction, uh, you know, just because of that, that, that sort of diversity, that sort of, um, like, in, in terms of, having our civilization spread out right that makes for a far more exciting game uh and but i don't think that something like ethiopians would sell alone i just don't believe that that would be the, the case i'm sorry if that any ethiopians are offending the, the i don't think it's a region with a lot of purchasing power i don't think it's a region that a lot of people automatically straight away think of unless you're one of the geeks like us uh, but one of the things that the masses do think of is the Vikings. So that's why I think there will be a solid pairing. Also, Ethiopians are relevant to the region, you know, in terms of, 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 the, of, the, of the civilizations around them. So it's not like completely in the middle of nowhere sort of thing. And yeah, that's my that is my solid number one prediction. If you disagree, let me know. Uh, just a quick word on the campaign. I genuinely can't really predict what it's going to be like. Uh, especially because I haven't gotten around to playing the DLC campaign yet. I've got it now and I'm just, uh, I'm, I'm going to get there. I just need to finish off the Mongolian campaign. God, I love this game. You guys love this game as much as I do. I've watched all the extra cutscenes and everything. It's so amazing. I love it. I love it so much. So, uh, so yeah, I feel like I can't comment on that just yet, but I know that they did like a regional sort of, um, anti, uh, sort of crusades uh, situation, def defending against crusades, uh, in this region of the world here that I'm highlighting with my mouse. Um, I have heard like some talk about the way to introduce Spanish is like a sort of reconquista campaign, but I just sorry guys, I just don't see that happening. I just don't, I just don't see, yeah, 2024. I just don't think it's happening, guys. But so, so I feel like maybe what they could do, okay, this is my boldest prediction for campaign, is that despite releasing something like the Danes and the Ethiopians, the campaign will be somewhere completely different, and it will actually be Japan. And as a way of plugging the previous DLC to anyone who hasn't bought it yet. You see what I'm saying? Because think about it, like uh, in, in that DLC, they had the Japanese and, and the Byzantines, right? But again, I haven't played that campaign yet, but I'm pretty sure the Byzantines and the Japanese were not really, <laughs> not really too prevalent, like in that campaign, I think. I might be wrong. Sorry if I'm wrong again. I haven't played it yet. So it's like, I don't think that the campaign basically needs to be related to the sieves that are released. That's my point. It's going to be distinct and separate. That's why I, I, I doubt there's going to be a big campaign sur uh, surrounded by Spain and the Americas. Could be cool if there was. I just, I just don't know why. I just don't see it happening. I'm not, I'm not sure exactly, but yeah, I'm going to guess. I'll do a special little uh, pink one and star for my campaign, and I think the campaign is going to be something to do with Japan and maybe Japan. You know, I don't know, uh, regional conflicts, maybe conflicts with China. I'm not sure. Anyway. I hope you enjoyed that one. I hope I didn't anger anyone. <laughs> I know there's a lot of uh, bold predictions out there. Please tell me yours. Tell me if uh, you, you agree, if you disagree. And remember, if I'm right, you all got to come back and tell me. <laughs> all right. Peace out, guys. Have a good one.